Welcome back friends. In this particular video, we'll be talking about hypersensitivity. And uh, in the subsequent video lectures, we'll be covering the type of hypersensitivities. Uh, that is four different types of hypersensitivity uh, according to the name called type 1, type 2, type 3 and type 4. And then we'll be looking at uh, each of this hypersensitivity in much more detail. Now in the very first discussion, now let us talk about uh, hypersensitivity or the types of hypersensitivity. Okay. So here, say according to uh, the, the specific responses, how type hypersensitivity is differentiated, and actually basically what is uh, type hypersensitivity. Now hypersensitivity, as the term suggests, so let me write it first here. We'll be discussing about hypersensitivity. So as the term suggests, hyper sensitivity or hypersensitization this is something that uh, that means the sensitive nature of something is getting hyper or triggered or getting increased right so what it happens in case of immunology in our immune system its immune system is designed in two different ways to function one is the cellular way another one is the humoral way. Uh, so in the cellular way there are cells, immune cells which are ready for attacking uh, pathogens, invading pathogens. And there are also humoral ways to fight against these pathogens via the complement system. We have discussed about complement system in our previous discussion. Now in this case about the hypersensitivity. Sometimes what happens uh, during the immune system combat. Now actually the immune system means it's a combat between pathogen which tries to enter into our body and between the cells of our immune system. So we are having two different parts. One is one side of it. So we are having a war going on all the time. The war is something like that. It is between pathogen. So between this bacteria for example, which is having uh, antigens uh, all around. So it's a bacteria or pathogen. And then we are on the other hand, we are having our own cell. So let us say this is our own cell. This is our immune cell. For example, this is a macrophage, say. This is a macrophage, for example. Okay. Now, immune system or immunology is nothing but the fight against this bacteria, these pathogens and this immune system cells. Now, there could be other components which are produced by the immune system cells. This is also getting against this bacteria or pathogens. Now, the important thing about that, sometimes what happens during this combat, what happens, these immune cells or own cells are producing something which is hampering our own cells. So this is a very important concept about the whole immunology that actually it is the arms race between the pathogen and our immune cells. Now immune cells are produced to, to, to configure in such a way that they can distinguish between two different types of cells. One is the foreign cell, one is the self cell. So if I write here, you can write it this is the non-self and this is the self. Now here comes the most important part about the immune system or the basis of the immune system that each of these immune cell have the ability to recognize its own particles and also recognize other particles. So it can recognize that whether the part of a cell that is carried out or that is carried out to a particular tissue is its own or it is not its own or it is some, some, coming from something else. So it can distinguish between a part of a cell. It can distinguish between a part of a peptide sequence or part of a protein or say part of a lipid, something like that. Okay, and this ability gives them the unique character to find out pathogens and kill them. Now, if they lose this character, it will end up with loss of immune response inside someone's body. Now, what happens sometimes that this, this ability to distinguish between this non-self and self, the ability for this distinguished nature of self and non-self getting hampered. And whenever this, this thing getting disrupted here, it is disrupted. Sometimes it is disrupted. And whenever it gets disrupted due to some nature, then it cannot recognize its own particle. Or it can happen that it cannot recognize a non-self particle. So whatever is getting, suppose it is getting something non-self particle. 
Now it cannot recognize it, so it, it does not kill it. So the non-cell particle stays there for a longer time, it will keep on damaging us. This kind of system can happen. We call them immunocompromised systems or immune failing system. Now on the other hand, it can also lead to another scenario. It is that it is, it is unable to recognize the self proteins or self peptides. In those conditions what happens that it is not uh, recognizing self. So it is recognizing self as non-self. So what it is doing, it is though it, it sees the self material but it starts secreting the chemical mediators that is degrading it. Now as a result of this degradation, the self molecule is gets lost. So it cannot decide the whether it is self or not. It, it instead of uh, thinking that it is self, it, it thinks it thought that it is a non-self part. So as a result of that, it start killing the self material. So death happens of the self materials. So it is killing itself. Now this is a situation which is called the autoimmunity or autoimmune system or autoimmune disease. Okay. Now what happens in hypersensitivity is that sometimes real pathogen does not enter into our body. Real pathogen due to some reason, for example, is not entering into our body. Now in those situations what is happening that this uh, whatever uh, immune system we are having, the immune cells we are having, it is hypersensitive. That it is so much sensitive that though the real pathogen is not entering into our body, but it's still detecting something other as a pathogen, a potent pathogen. So these are the flaws of immune system, the negative side of our immune system, the dark side of our immune system. Now in these cases, suppose the cell is getting something, getting something which is not pathogen. So let me draw it here. It is getting something, for example, say a pollen. So let us draw a pollen like this. Okay, it's a pollen. Now it is getting this pollen or say dust particle. So in the dust we can have many things. It's a pollen or dust particle. Now it enters into our body. This is not a pathogen. This is not a bacteria or a virus that can harm us. It's not potent, but it recognizes it as recognizes it as a potent pathogen or potent non-self material. Now as it is recognizing it as a potent non-self material, it is producing the immune responses against this, this dust or pollen or dander or, or animal fur or something like that. Now as a result of that, it triggers a massive immune response inside our body. Now this is called hypersensitivity. So there are a lot of flaws that in our immune system we can tell you that it cannot recognize sometimes itself, it cannot re recognize its non-self, it, ca it loses the ability to distinguish between self and non-self. It can happen in autoimmune diseases or immune compromised diseases. But on the other hand, sometimes dust, pollen or animal fur something enters our body, they are, not, they are not pathogenic to us. But still, immune system is so much sensitive that whatever enters, say, hey, what, what enters, just start producing antibodies, start producing all those chemical mediators and throw them out. We have to go against it. But though it is not a bacteria or a virus, it's a potent pathogen, it's not a potent pathogen, but still it is going against it in a rapid way. This is much more, this ultra sensitization. This is called the hypersensitivity of a body, hypersensitivity of an immune system. Okay, now there are four different types of hypersensitivity that are associated depending upon the type of response they are including, depending upon whether they are requiring any antigen antibody interaction or not, depending upon they are in involving any complement system or not, we can divide them into four different categories. Now those categories are simply termed as type 1, so let me write here, uh, they are uh, distinguished between four different types, so they are called Type 1 hypersensitivity, type 2 hypersensitivity, and let us change the color. Say type 3 hypersensitivity and type 4 hypersensitivity. So there are four different types of hypersensitivity type 1, type 2, type 3, and type 4.
Now, in the subsequent video discussions, we'll be talking about each of this type of hypersensitivity. Now, we'll be discussing about very detail about the type 1 hypersensitivity, which is the most common one. Then, we'll be talking about type 2, type 3, and type 4, and their associated natures and properties in the hypersensitivity reactions, and what is actually happening inside our body, inside our immune system, during this hypersensitivity reaction, we'll be learning that. Okay, so that's uh, introduction about the hypersensitivity and I hope it will help you. Thank you.